Hey guys, so I recently got in a new toy. It's uh, this guy right here. This is the new laser tester by uh, Anti-Laser. Uh, laser Interceptor has had one for quite a while now, and uh, Anti-Laser has had one too, and they just released a, a new version of it, which is this guy. And basically what they are, it's a little handheld key fob size uh, laser tester, which can be used to simulate the pulse patterns from a variety of different laser guns. And so you can take it, press the button, it'll fire just like a LiDAR gun will, and you can actually take this, place it right in front of your uh, different jammer heads, and verify that the heads on your car are still working. There's no damage to the cables, each head is still working just fine, so it's a great way of actually uh, testing your equipment and making sure it's all uh, operational. It's also kind of fun because it can actually uh, simulate a whole bunch of different LiDAR guns, and so you can see you know, what uh, radar detectors respond to what gun, what laser jammers respond to different guns, all this kind of stuff. Uh, the range isn't that great, maybe like 20 20, 30, 50 feet, depending on you know what detector you're using. It's not like a LiDAR gun where it has a really, really powerful beam that can be picked up thousands of feet away. It's one of those things that's meant to be used up in close range. Uh, you know, And it's basically like a TV remote control. You've got a little infrared uh, LED right there, and you just press the button and it pulses the same exact way different uh, LiDAR guns do. So anyways, what I wanted to do in this video is just kind of show you the two in action and uh, go over some of the similarities and differences uh, between the two. Um, so, first of all, size-wise, they're actually pretty similar, as you can see here. Uh, this one's a little bit more boxy-ish. This one kind of does this weird uh, angle thing. Kind of cool, makes it seem a little bit smaller, but they're really about the same size. Uh, Thickness-wise, they're also pretty similar. Uh, weight, pretty similar. I don't notice, you know, much. Not a big deal. The uh, main difference, though, is actually the way you use them. Uh, and you can see basically right here we've got uh, two buttons on the anti-laser tester and we've got five here on the LI tester. And uh, the way that it works, this guy supports 14 different guns. Uh, there's five different buttons and each button corresponds to a different pulse rate. Uh, some of the guns actually have identical pulse rates. So you'll see like for example we've got the uh, Pro Laser 3, the Pro Laser 4, and the Pro Light Plus all happen to transmit at 200 pulses per second even though they're actually different guns with different features, capabilities, all that kind of stuff. But the pulse rate is the same which is why you see that. Uh, so with this guy, excuse me, it's actually really, really easy to, um, you know, choose what you want to use. You just press a button. You're like, okay, well, I want to do the uh, true speed. So I just press the button and fire. You'll see the uh, LED right there lights up once I'm transmitting. And pretty cool. Really, really simple, easy to use. And I love just how easy to use the LI tester is. Uh, this guy, it's a little bit different. If you look on the back, We've got a cheat sheet here for all the different guns that it supports. You can see we've got uh, some standard guns like the Marksman, the Ultralight, uh, the True Speed. There's also uh, some guns that are used internationally, such as the Laser Patrol and the Traffic Patrol XR. We've got some more of the standard guns like the Stalker LZ-1, the Pro Laser 3. And then uh, we've also got three more guns at the end, which is actually the reason why I got this one specifically, is it handles, uh, well, it can mimic some of the newer guns with uh, variable pulse rates that are designed, hopefully, to uh, attempt to defeat laser jammers. We've got uh, the Laser Atlantis uh, with stealth mode, which is an older technology, um, which, again, is designed to defeat jammers. So we've got that simulated here. We've got uh, one of the pulse patterns for the uh, older laser ally. And then we've also got a pattern here for the Dragon Eye Compact. Uh, and these ones, uh, without getting into some of the details as far as, you know, how each pattern works, I mean, yeah, the Compact, it's one of those things where uh, every time you pull the trigger, you're actually going to be getting a different pulse pattern. And so what they did is they basically just uh, made a recording of one of the trigger pulls on one of the firmware versions of the gun, recorded it, and this guy just uh, loops playing, you know, that simulation of the Compact or that recording of the Compact. So that's what it is. And uh, anyways, uh, so we've got uh, several different guns that are unavailable here, which is, again, why I got this guy. And the way that it works is uh, we've got two buttons on the front. We've got uh, one button for uh, transmitting. The other button is going to be for selecting which gun we want. So let's say we wanted to choose, for the sake of example, the uh, Stalker LZ-1. Okay, so it's got a number five by it. Let's go ahead and wake this guy up. Okay, so what we're going to go ahead and do is press this button here five times. One, two, three, four, five. Now we've got it selected. We're going to press this button here to confirm. And now to actually show you uh, the pulse rate in action, I've actually got uh, a Whistler CR85 here, radar detector. Uh, it's got a really cool feature where it'll actually tell you the uh, pulse rate of the 
uh, LiDAR gun that you're being shot with, which is why we're going to go ahead and uh, use this guy. Um, oh, actually, while I was talking, this guy timed out, and it's kind of one of the things where if you don't use it for a little while, after a while it just times out, so I'm going to have to re-one. I just did two, three, four, five. Okay, and we'll select that one, and we transmit. And you can see right there, oh, I've got the volume turned down. Let's turn it up. There we go. Can you see it on camera? Maybe not. I don't know. Anyways, you saw it said uh, 129. The pulse rate's about 130 pulses per second. So uh, that's accurate there. It does a good job of picking it up. Uh, we can do the same thing here. We'll do the stalker on uh, this gun, which is going to be the fourth button. Press it there. I got that one registers as 130. Cool. So there you go. You can see uh, there's a look at uh, you know the different guys in action. Um, well, for fun, let's go ahead and do the the laser ally and the uh, the compact as well, since uh, you know that's the reason I got this one. So the laser ally is going to be eight. So we're going to do one, two, three, four. Hope I did it right. Five, six, seven, eight. Okay, go ahead and transmit, and I uh, thought so. Okay, so that's actually the, uh, what's it called, the Laser Ally in Stealth Mode 68. So the reason uh, it messed up, it's a little kind of annoying thing I found with this guy, is sometimes when you press it once, it'll do, okay, so that's it timing out again, you can see right there, it does that. So watch this, normally what happens when I press the button, uh, it'll just beep here once to confirm that I pressed the button, but watch this. It does a double beep, so I'm not sure if that's actually one press. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't, but anyways. I think it's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. There we go. That's what I want. So it is working now. See how the pulse rate is actually changing there? So with this one, the Whistler is actually giving us the uh, average pulse rate over the past couple seconds or so, and that's why it's actually changing. And because the Laser Ally is a uh, variable pulse rate gun, you can actually see the pulse rate changing over time on the Whistler, which is pretty slick. Uh, finally, let's go ahead and just run through the compact real quick. Uh, so it's going to be nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Go ahead and select it and trigger. Cool. So that pulse rate is what? 207 pulses per second, which is interesting because that's actually a, a different pulse rate than the, the average pulse rate I've seen before, you know, scoping out the compact. But the thing with the compact is, you know, there's different firmware versions, uh, all this kind of stuff. So, and again, every time you pull the trigger with the compact, it's going to be a different uh, pulse pattern anyways. But anyways, that is a recording of uh, one of the compacts that uh, been recorded, programmed in there, and then you can just uh, repeat it with the press of a button. So, um, yeah, there's a look at uh, the two different uh, laser testers there. Um, which one is better? I like both for different reasons. Uh, I tend to prefer the LI one just because uh, it's a little bit easier to use. You just press the button and it fires. You know, it's really simple. You don't have to go through menus like this and figure out, oh, which one do I want? Is that four or eight or seven or one? Uh, you just, I want that gun. Fire. Uh, this one is a little bit confusing sometimes. If, like, you want to do this, it's not actually the button there. You have to go up a little bit. So that I find kind of confusing sometimes, uh, but not as big of a deal. You kind of figure that out after a little while. Uh, with this one, I've noticed there are kind of some annoyances with it, like uh, there's things like, actually check this out, you know how we were uh, just shooting the compact? Uh, check this out. If I go ahead and shoot it now, Laser. see how it's shooting now 125? What it does there is uh, after a couple seconds, uh, you'll see the light is on, it's still set to, uh, it was originally you know, set to do the compact, but uh, what happens is it actually times out like that after, I don't know, 10 seconds or whatever it is, and it returns back to the default, which in this case is uh, the first one, which is the uh, marksman and the ultralight, so 125 pulses per second. So it keeps exiting out of your settings after about 10 seconds if you don't use it, and then if you want to go back to whatever you were using, you have to go back in through the menus and uh, reactivate it. Um, additionally, I'm finding that uh, sometimes it'll actually miss button presses, like uh, 
it'll actually press this. The first time it does that double beep, which I'm still trying to figure out. Sometimes it seems like that does count as the first press, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but if you try to go through here really quickly, trying to press that, um, I just did like, I don't know, six or seven presses or something, but only blinked maybe three or four. So basically, if you're going through here too quickly, uh, it's not going to actually register. So you have to go through kind of slow and wait for it to confirm. And, you know, and then if you don't get it in time, it times out. So basically, you have to go through here slowly, select the one that you want, press this button to activate it, and you got about 10 seconds or so for it to actually be working. Um, so it's a little bit annoying to use in practice sometimes, having to go back and forth and go a little bit slower, and sometimes it misses presses, like the first one, I can't tell. Sometimes that does count as a press, sometimes it doesn't. A little bit weird in practice, which is why I prefer this one, but I can understand having so many uh, you know, guns programmed in this one, it may make more sense to actually go through with a menu system like this. So. Um, yeah, both are good for different reasons. This one retails for 50 bucks. This one retails for 60 bucks. Uh, they each have their own pros and cons. This one is easier to use. This one has support for more guns. So you kind of got your pick as far as which one you prefer. Uh, I like both for different reasons, but you know, if you want to get one, pick the one you like or both or whatever. Uh, super convenient. I usually keep one in my car. Uh, always handy for just going out and verifying that my jammers are up and running. And uh, that's the main thing I use it for can't really trigger uh, very easily other detectors on the road. You know, if you want to like, shoot a Cobra user or something, just because the range with these is so limited, uh, you don't really have like a huge range. Um, but they're great for you know up-close testing and uh, experimentation and verification like this. So anyways, just wanted to show you guys the two different uh, LiDAR testers here in action. Uh, again, we got the anti-laser tester, the new one, not the older one, which is kind of more of like a, a stick shape, like a stick of gum. This is the newer one that just came out. And that is the uh, LI tester. So. There you go. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.